welcome, Patriot Radio News Hour. Happy Friday. I'm a little, I'll tell you this, a little under the weather. My, my wife has been fighting the flu all week. And because of my super awesome power, I have been able to fend it off until last night. <laughs> it, 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 it's trying to get a hold of me, but I'm battling it. Uh, I'm going to battle through it here. Uh, again, happy Friday. I'm Joe Jaquin, CEO of the Patriot Trading Group. Legal, lawful, constitutional tender. It is what we do. Wealth insurance gold and silver and for the first time in i don't know eight nine weeks a little bit of a pull a little profit taking here uh gold's down about 10 bucks i'll tell you why but more importantly great day to buy because it's less than it was and what it's been for the last like i said for several weeks we'll get to that we got fake news friday to get to uh, uh, I forget the website, allamericangold.com. Uh, don't forget the metals program. I, I keep talking about it. You know if I talk about something this much that it's a great thing to get into. Uh, for as little as $100 a month, there is no maximum. You get four physical deliveries a year. You're going to be buying at great pricing, which is the most important thing, right? Because you know what we're all about here. Right, we're not about bait and switch and game playing and and high markups and all that stuff. When you talk to us, you need to take a shower. None of that stuff. We just simply the best products at the best prices. Period. Right, and then also on the same token, right? And when you sell them back, because it's just as important, you have to stay private. I mean, if you want to go your own way, you can. I mean, you know, people do. But all this stuff that we recommend, you can buy it, sell it, trade it. You don't have to get 1099. You don't have to worry about any of those things. 800-951-0592. Uh, I, I will say this. Not that it, it's a big deal, but it is. As, as most of you know, we're buying the radio station up there in, in Johnstown. And today was one of those days. Our lot, our stream is down. We know that it's been down for you know since last night. Uh, the phones are down at the studio. I mean, pretty much everything's down. This would be a time where normally KHNC would be down right now, and you'd either be hearing elevator music uh, or possibly maybe uh, you know taped old show. That would be the best case scenario. Uh, we are live today. Uh, I, le- last week, I told you that we've been doing a lot of work that you haven't seen. Uh, today, for the first time, we are now using our new big pipe. <laughs> That's what I like to call it. Uh, we, we, we actually it just got finished being installed yesterday. It's the, we didn't install it for the reason we're using it today, but it just so happens because we have it there, uh, the the Internet provider that the station uses is down. The, the Internet provider that we got the big pipe from isn't. Consequently, uh, you're hearing my show. Uh, we'll hear Alex Jones after that, and, and I know that doesn't mean a lot, uh, but just a great job uh, by Jason and Brian who have been battling it up there all 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 last night uh, into this morning, and I'm happy to say uh, we're, we're here, we're there. Things are getting better and better, and, and some of it you can see, some of it you don't see. Next week, I'm hopeful, we have some new equipment at the studios in Phoenix. We're going to have, and this is what I'm hopeful, we're spo- it's scheduled, that I'll have some new equipment being installed at my studios here, in the in the hole in the ceiling studio, and fingers crossed, we could have a the highest quality show uh, possible starting next week, uh, where a new website is coming. I think fingers crossed as well for for KHNC. 
see a new website is coming, I believe, next week as well. So uh, I, I, we will also next week have a new news feed coming to you up there in Colorado. So a lot of great things are happening, not as fast as I'd want them to. Uh, just an update. Uh, we are going to be uh, closing in. I thought it would be here by now, but we got an update. Uh, we've got some new equipment heading to the transmitter. And maybe probably in the next week or two, hopefully, uh, we'll have that put in place, which is going to give us even more power. The sound should be the best. You've heard it in a long, long time. So we're all fired up about it, uh, and great things are coming. And, again, I can't thank everybody enough for the support they have shown us. If you want to support the radio station, support Patriot Trading Group and buy your product from us, and that's what is going to uh, allow us to continue to do the things that we've been doing. And so far in January, you've responded. i uh, got a lot of great ground to cover today, a bunch of trade news out. What did, or, well, I can't say it, confirmed but unconfirmed sources, what did China tell the United States it's willing to do. We'll do that. Obviously, break news Friday first. Then we'll come back. I'll tell you what they said. And then we had a little problem with the quote-unquote soft data today. I'll tell you all about that as well. Picture Radio News Hour. My super awesome powers are in effect. We'll be back in a minute. One of these things is not like the others. One of these things doesn't belong. Can you tell which thing is not like the others? Before I finish my song. From News Headquarters, this is Fake News Friday. Ladies and gentlemen, can I please have your attention? I've just been handed an urgent and horrifying news story. I need all of you to stop what you're doing and listen. What is real? How do you define real? Fake news Friday. Hey, 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 hey. Fake news Friday. Uh, just a quick reminder. In case you don't know how this works, everything... Uh, that we talk about on Fake News Friday, all these stories. The professor, uh, Glenn, pulls these out. And sometimes uh, he'll make up a one a one story, can't believe, but more, more, pretty much all the stories are real. But he changes a small part of one of them, and we got to guess which one it's going to be. Uh, we are getting, we're not quite there. Listen, I, you know, I always think I can get things done faster than what I can, but I'm hopeful... Uh, that by February 1st, we're going to change this up and we're going to allow for uh, some listener participation and give out prizes. You know, Silver Eagles, uh, who knows, maybe a 10th ounce of gold. We'll, we'll have some fun with it. Uh, but right now, I will say this, my eyes are bulging out of my head. Uh, a lot of stuff going on for us. Ramon, I don't even know who's playing today. Who do we have on the line today? Mystery guest, check in. This is Brian with four hours of sleep, so you can say I'm running on fumes. You know what? We'll call it even. Right? <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm coming down with something. You had no sleep. By the way, uh, Brian, boy, we were having a lot of fun, aren't we? Oh, yeah. Fun. <laughs> More fun than a person should be allowed. <laughs> and All when right. We say so fun, I, Brian, I don't recall. I have not beaten you since you uh, went Benedict Arnold. Yeah, th this may be your opportunity to just pummel me, uh, even though you got your own issues you you got going on. All right, Ramon, we're ready. All right, here we go. Story number one: A teen is lucky to be alive, as well as a passenger and another driver when she attempted the so-called bird box uh -huh. challenge and drove a car blindfolded. The 17-year-old was driving with a 16-year-old passenger in Layton, Utah, blindfolded in order to emulate the blindfolds worn in the new Netflix movie Bird Box, in which the characters need to travel outside with their eyes covered 
in order to avoid seeing evil entities which drive those who witness them to suicide. A strange new YouTube fad challenges people to go about their daily activities while blindfolded and post the results. The teen's pickup truck was uh, damaged when she swerved into oncoming traffic, apparently sideswiping a car and skidded into a light pole. Uh, Remarkably, there were no injuries. The local police department tweeted, Bird Box Challenge, while driving predictable results. This happened on Monday as a result of the driver covering her eyes while driving on Leighton Parkway. Luckily, no injuries. That was the tweet. Less than a week earlier, on January 2nd, Netflix issued a warning and tweeted, Can't believe I have to say this, but please do not hurt yourselves with this Bird Box Challenge. That's that's story number one. Story number two, retired Nevada Senator Harry Reid says that he hopes to persuade members of Congress to take a fresh look at the UFO phenomenon. The intriguing revelation reported came about uh, from the former Senator's Majority Leader who spearheaded the Pentagon's UFO research project and did an interview with the Nevada radio station on Thursday. We have hundreds and hundreds of people that have seen the same thing. Reed marveled, something in the sky, it moves a certain way. He went on to advocate uh, for developing a way in which military pilots could report UFO sightings uh, sightings to their superiors without uh, fear of facing ridicule or having the encounter negatively impact their career. He indicated that he had called a scheduled, uh, had a call scheduled later that day with a powerful member in Congress and that the topic of conversation was this very issue. On one particular part of the interview, he was asked about Area 51, which sits in his home state of Nevada. Reed recalled, oh, sure, I've been there. I've been to Area 51. I know Area 51. I don't know if I should say how many times, but let's say lots and lots of times. That is story number two. Story number three. It's the simple meme that's taking over your social media feeds. The 10-year challenge where users upload side-by-side photos of themselves from a decade ago and now. Facebook on Wednesday distanced themselves from the 10-year challenge after an article set off speculation that the social media giant could be secretly mining data from these photos to improve its facial recognition algorithms. It's a scenario that those who have studied social media companies don't rule out, despite Facebook's denial. The photo challenge gives Facebook a perfect, it's quote, a perfect storm for machine learning, said Amy Webb, a professor at NYU Stern School of Business. Quote, it presents Facebook with an opportunity to learn to train their systems to better recognize small changes in users' appearances. Facebook CEO Mark Zuckerberg said, but would not publicly comment on the viral meme, stating that the company is not in the business of sharing or manipulating user data and that users are free to delete their pictures completely from Facebook sites. So there you go. There's story number one, two, and three. Lots of lots of info today. Who would like to go first? Who has less sleep? Less sleep? That would be Brian. All right. Let's go with him. He's dopey. You know what? Uh, yeah, dopey with or without sleep. Uh, <laughs> bird box challenge. I, I believe that one to be totally, totally true. I watched that movie. It was kind of disturbing, a little disappointing, but uh, I believe that one's true. That's the first one. Harry Reid, UFO reporting Area Fifty One that he's been to many, many times. Uh, something tells me there's that's maybe it, but I'm going to say that one's true too. So I'm going with the third one that's got something fake in it. Uh, may, maybe the Maybe the aspect of being able to retract your photos from Facebook is the fake part of that one. Once once it's up in the Internet, it's it's always up there from what I understand. Very interesting because, you know, I was thinking about uh, number one, right? First of all, I heard that movie's horrible, but yeah. uh, neither here nor there. It brought me back to Ricky Bobby in Talladega Night <laughs> when, when he tried that. It did not work well. So, uh, yes, I believe people are that dumb. Uh, I agree with with Brian. I'm that's not even shocking to me. Uh, Harry Reid and the UFO thing. I want that to be true. I do. I want it to be true because you know I'm like everybody else out there. 
Uh, you know, and, and everybody can believe what they want, but I believe that they're watching us, you know, that they're out there. Too many people, right? Why not? Let's let's just throw it all out there. I, 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 and I'm with Brian as well. That's the same thing. Yeah, right? <laughs> Muller and Scully, right? Get them out there. They're out there. Uh, but, but I'll just say this. I think Brian hit it right on the head, which is, you know, they always, oh, well, you can delete it or you can do this or you can do that. Of course, what they don't tell you is to actually do, yes, you maybe can possibly do it, but the uh, average human being would have no idea of how to actually do it. And once you put something out on the Internet, it's there forever. I, I agree with that as well. So I'm going to agree with Brian. I think it's story number three is the fake one. Well, obviously getting... Uh less sleep and being slightly sick has sharpened your other skills because both of you are correct. Wow. Good and job, you've, Joe. you've nailed it both. It's Mark Zuckerberg saying, ah, yeah, you can delete it. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Forget about it. <laughs> All right, here we go. I think we have time. Yeah, we should be able to squeeze these in. For round number two, let's see, here we go. A proposal in Connecticut would mandate instructions on climate change in public schools statewide beginning in elementary school. Connecticut has already adopted science standards that call for teaching of climate change, but if the bill passes, it is believed that it would be the country's first to write such requirements into law. A lot of schools make the study climate of climate change an elective, and I don't believe it should be an elective, said Representative Christine Palm, a Democrat from Chester, who proposed the bill. I think it should be mandatory, I don't, and I think it should be as early, so there's no excuses for kids to grow up ignorant of what's at stake. So that's story number one, climate change. Story number two... Boston Mayor Martin Walsh wants to mandate that doctors teach patients about gun safety. This act would require medical professionals to ask patients about guns in the home and bring up the topic of gun safety. The goal, Boston Police Commissioner William Gross said, is to identify those at risk for domestic violence, suicide, or child access to guns in order to guide people to mental health counseling, resources, or other help. We're just asking them to help identify ways to save lives, Gross said. The fact that a patient owns a gun would not put their medical would not be put in their medical record and is not intended to have physicians help solve crimes. Chief of Health and Human Services Marty Martinez said that while the program is already common practice in many of the city's community health centers, legislation would broaden the program statewide. Story number three for the third year in a row, Baltimore uh, tops Orkin's top 50 bed bug cities list. Washington, D.C. moved up two spots while Atlanta and Philadelphia joined the top 10, replacing San Francisco and Dallas, respectively. Five cities moved into the top 50 this year, including Lansing, Michigan, uh, Orlando, Florida, Davenport, Iowa, Fort Wayne, Indiana, oh, and Youngstown, Ohio. Houston dropped nine positions, while Greensville, South Carolina, rose seven, entering the top ten. This list is based on treatment data from metro areas where Orkin performed the most bed bug treatments from December 1st, 2017 to November 30th, 2018. The ranking includes both residential and commercial treatments. President Donald Trump tweeted, It was no surprise to him, given that Democrats took over the House, and there goes the neighborhood, he said, in a bombastic one. 140 character attack on the new majority on Capitol Hill. So there you go, three stories. Who shall go? Let's go, Joe first. Well, Hit it. I, do- I actually dozed off. I'm sorry. Uh, was it so because of me or just in general? Just in general. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what was the first one again? Oh, uh, let's see. Let's break it on down to Connecticut wants to make it a law that you. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. So uh, climate change. Yeah, the climate change thing. Uh, I absolutely believe that because people are dumb. I got news for you. Mm-hmm. Uh, the weather changes. Okay. What? Uh, there you go. Uh, story number two uh, with that whole gun thing. Yeah, it's, again, maybe the dumbest thing I've ever heard, mm-hmm. but that probably is what makes it true. Both of those. This is how I'm going through it. The first two stories are so idiotic that, that, that they have to be true. Yeah. Therefore... The last one, which I fell asleep in, has to be the fake story. All right, you're going with story number three. All right, Brian. Just don't fall asleep in one of those bug bed-infested cities, Joe. (laughs) 
I, I agree. I agree. Insanity abounds. The, the, the climate change, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, the weather's changing. Uh, <laughs> I mean, we've had ice ages, and, right? You know, you, back, this desert used to be an ocean, right? You know, come on, folks. Yeah, I haven't seen it, so I, I guess I'm still holding judgment. But I, I would agree that that third that third story with the bed bugs, maybe the maybe the different cities are are uh, are not accurate, or maybe the Trump tweet is is the the exaggeration part. But isn't that insane that those those crazy stories that are a depiction of what we're what we're seeing that that mind boggling to me, gentlemen? Yep. You are both correct, and you hit it right on the head there. The tweet is the fake portion of it, and you could actually solve. Bed bugs by wearing a blindfold to bed so you don't have to see them. <laughs> How did this? Was it because of climate change that we now have the bed bugs? Yeah, yeah, not because of the border border travel. I got no comment. Well, there you go. You know what? We're going to call this one a tie. Uh, another great episode of Fake News Friday. When we get back, we're going to talk about China and what. They may or may not have offered the United States. This is the Phyllis Schlafly Report, a daily commentary continuing the conservative pro-family legacy of Phyllis Schlafly. Now the president of Phyllis Schlafly Eagles, Ed Martin. Late last year, the drawn-out saga of dismissed Facebook Inc. executive Palmer Lucky became fully public, and the world saw the viciously uninclusive face of leftist politics at Facebook. In 2016, Lucky donated $10,000 to an anti-Hillary Clinton group, sparking outrage from his fellow executives at the company. Within six months, he was let go. Neither he nor Facebook ever admitted why he left the social networking giant, and even under oath earlier this year while testifying before Congress about data privacy, Mark Zuckerberg denied that Lucky's departure had anything to do with politics. As it turns out, that's simply not true. Mr. Lucky was put on leave, then fired after the matter was discussed at the highest levels of Facebook. Internal emails show that after much unhappiness among the upper echelon, Zuckerberg pressured Lucky to publicly voice support for libertarian candidate Gary Johnson, despite Lucky's years-long support of Donald Trump. Even now, Lucky has told people that the furor of his political beliefs across Facebook and Silicon Valley are the reason for his termination. This extreme left-wing bias in the tech industry of California isn't new, but it does give us a sharp reminder that these far-left activists who will go to great lengths to fire someone for their political beliefs are the gatekeepers to much of the world's communication. This liberal social media behemoth is a problem that we really have yet to deal with fully. James O'Keefe and Project Veritas gave us a very interesting look last year into the world of Twitter and their shadow banning of Trump supporters and conservatives across the board. This story about Lucky's firing at Facebook opens another side of this argument. Silicon Valley employee political contributions are so lopsided it's almost ridiculous to compare the numbers. Employee donations from Google totaled over $1.5 million for Hillary Clinton's campaign and just under $25,000 for Donald Trump. At Facebook, employees donated nearly half a million dollars to Hillary for America while only $4,600 to Trump. This is certainly more than even left-leaning, as Mark Zuckerberg would have us believe. There is a stranglehold of liberal money and thought over every major social networking company. This has been the Phyllis Schlafly Report from Phyllis Schlafly Eagles. Political correctness is no longer simply about restricting speech. This tool for tyranny has led to employees being fired, pastors silenced, small businesses closed, and truth suppressed. Thankfully, the politically correct can't censor the work at phyllisschlafly.com. Join us, won't you, at phyllisschlafly.com. And thanks for listening to the Phyllis Schlafly Report. Welcome back. Hey, I'm glad to hear. You know what? It looks like Phyllis Schlafly, they've got on the Fake News Friday bandwagon, right? Did you hear that report? And obviously, all of us will be like, oh, that can't be true. But yet it is. Fascinating. I mean creepy, right? Downright creepy when you think about it. It's almost mathematically impossible. But but yet there it is. It's crazy. Uh, again, it, it, it's why we're headed down the path we're headed. Uh, it, it's one of those things where every day, even days like today where I'm not on my game, I'm not feeling the greatest. Uh, you got gold down $9, which isn't a lot, but you know, still it's down $9. Uh, 
The Dow's up 250 points. And uh, you're watching all this nonsense play out. And then I hear something like that, and then I just know. You know, I just, yeah, I hope. I feel bad for everybody that doesn't have it. That's all I can say. If you don't have gold and silver, uh, I do. I just feel bad for it. My heart goes out for you because you're going to suffer. Uh, by the way, before I get into the China news, because I want to I wanna share this all with you, the richest 1% of the people now own over 50% of all the stocks. Yeah. Right? So when you think about who the Federal Reserve is helping, just so you know, I just just think about it for a second. It's not about you. It's not about me. It's not about our 401ks or IRAs. It's not, it's not about any of that. It's about their little elitist buddies. And it's ridiculous that we've gotten to this point, yet here we are. So what, what drove the market today? Because the actual data was not that good. It all has to do with a story that broke late yesterday. It's the same story that I've been telling you that I'm expecting, which is China wants to buy more stuff. They've wanted to buy more stuff for a long time, just so everybody knows. The problem is the stuff they want to buy, we don't want to sell them. I'll call them a dual purpose stuff, right? And you know what I mean by that. Hey, uh, this this technology is embedded into this whatever it may be, this blender, this microwave. Uh, of course, I don't think we make blenders or microwaves here, but but this telecommunications equipment or whatever it may be, satellite technology could also be used against us. So we don't want to sell them that. Uh, but my, my thinking is the most likely outcome of this trade issue, which again, I'm going to say this right now, you got to give Trump credit. Now, they're not going to, but you have to. Now, I don't know, we don't know any details, right? All the details you're seeing out there, none of that's been confirmed by anybody. But the Chinese, it appears, are saying, hey, listen, okay, we're going to buy stuff, lots of it. And remember what I told you the other day? Listen, they're already the largest economy in the world. This year, by the end of this year, in dollar terms, they'll be number one. In 10 years, their economy will be twice the size of the United States. So, obviously, they should be able to buy more stuff. This will be good news for farmers. I know that, listen, they'll buy soybeans. They, 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 they're more than happy to do that. Uh, I, I, my guess will be we'll see maybe crude oil purchases. Uh, natural gas, right? Things of that nature. Uh, but but this is what Wall Street's excited about is uh, the resolution to this trade thing. Once again, though, and you know me, I even when I'm not on my game, I go to all mo- I go to multiple different places to see if I can find something different. There was one thing in every from Wall Street Journal to Reuters to press releases out of AP, from the Treasury Department, I mean, uh, unnamed sources, right, because I hate those, but the unnamed sources in the negotiation, you can see anything about China stealing our stuff, right, because isn't that right with, with the kind of the guides of the trade war what was is the stealing of the technology i haven't seen that part i don't think we'll get that part even if we do get it how do we enforce it i don't know that we could but if it's true what i've been reading 
that China is going to ramp up what it buys from the United States. And, and, And at least from these reports, and again, I don't know if they're facts or not facts. Right, we're going to have to wait and see. There should be a significant reduction in the trade imbalance over the next five years between us and them. Right now, uh, just so it, they say the official number is three hundred and twenty-five billion, but that's really not it. In, in just actual stuff. It's over half a trillion dollars, over $500 billion. We get down to that 300 and some, some odd billion because of banking. See, and remember, what free trade was really about, it was never really about our jobs. It was never really about selling everybody in China a washing machine, a blender, a microwave, and a vehicle. It was about banking. You know, one of the things, that, and, and uh, we're working on some other things as well, but Jason and Brian really do, when they, they do a, a show at 3 o'clock uh, mountain time, 3 o'clock mountain time. Right now, that's the Arizona's on the same, t- same clock. They touch upon all the evils of the banking industry and, and go back. I mean, you're talking about... You know, going back, uh, predating uh, the Civil War and predating uh, uh, the the Revolution, all the way through. You know, whether it be World War One or World War Two or any of really any of these other types of skirmishes, and and the free trade agreement is one of those. Right? They wanted to sell debt to the Chinese, and that's just what it was really about. Uh, and now. Uh, I don't know if anybody in their wildest dreams ever thought this was going to be the case, but this is what's been driving the market this morning, is uh, progress, if you will, with the Chinese, and basically the Chinese saying, hey, we're going to buy stuff. Now, hopefully it's not, we want to buy the stuff you don't want to sell us, is what we usually have gotten. Patriot Radio News Hour, we'll be back right after the break. Welcome back. 800-951-0592. Everything's kind of on sale today. Silver Eagle's now 380 a roll. Um, I have... Let's call... I got less than a case. 21 or 22 rolls of backdate Silver Eagles. Yeah, I got some. Those are three seventy five. So twenty nineteen is three eighty. Back dates three seventy five. Uh, the gold side twenty dollar liberties and saint thirteen ninety. Buy ten or more thirteen eighty at eight hundred nine five one zero five nine two. The International Revenue Service, you know, the ones that got to go back to work. (laughs) You know what's funny is this is this is where we're at as as a country. They got to go back to work, even though they're not going to get paid until the shutdown is over, because we can't afford people not getting the refund check. And that just kind of tells you, right, this is this is a problem. And the reason is simple. So many people living paycheck to paycheck. And by so many, you're looking at probably three-quarters of the workforce. Paycheck to paycheck. I feel horrible for all these government employees that have got their bills due that aren't getting checked. Now, I'm on the side of, right, we need the walls. Fund the wall and let's go. Right? And everybody knows. They don't have to give $5 billion. They, they give, hey, how about three? And they settle and go. But either way, it's got to be done. But just a, just another example, because that's, a, you know, 800,000 people. 
How many of the people get these government refunds? Millions. And that's why they're going back to work. But that's not what I wanted to talk about. Do you know that the IRS has a weapons inventory? No, we probably don't talk about this enough. And again, this is, you know, this government creep that we have in all of the, the, the federal government, state and local government. This is another example. Right? This is somebody that, right, this is... Uh, Accounting, right? Because if we're talking about, hey, we got to make sure people pay their fair share of taxes. Why do they have a weapons inventory? They're not the the military. They're not, they're not the FBI. They're not out there uh, mixing it up with the drug lords. They have four thousand four hundred and eighty. Seven guns, right? Again, uh, these Democrats want all this gun control. Let's start with the IRS. I know how to get rid of 4,487 of them. They've got over 5 million rounds of ammunition. And actually 5 million, 62,000. And this is, uh, you know, for government, this is highly... Accurate number. Now, I don't know if the number is accurate. It's just a very interesting number. Because, you know, if I, I would say if it was government, hey, we got 5 million rounds of ammunition. That's not what they said. We got 5,062,006 rounds of ammo. And they've got 4,487 weapons. That's 1,128 rounds of ammo per weapon. That's a lot of shooting. Sounds a little excessive, but, you know, what what do I know? By the way, the Government Accountability Office is the one that produced these numbers. I've got an idea. If we get rid of the weapons that the IRS shouldn't really have to begin with, the Government Accountability Office could probably get rid of a few people that were actually counting the weapons. Right? What do they do? Go in there, and they're counting the ammo. Okay, each one of these boxes of ammo has 50 rounds in it, and we've got one, two, three, four, five. We count every box, right? I mean, is that what's happening? Included in the arsenal, 15 fully automatic firearms. 56,000 rounds of ammo for those automatic firearms. Uh, The same report, the federal law enforcement purchase and inventory controls of firearms, ammunition, and tactical equipment, say that real fast, says that the Office of the Inspector General of the Department of Health and Human Services had 194 fully automatic firearms. (laughs) <laughs> so the IRS only got 15. I feel okay in in terms of of what the Department of Health and Human Services has. 15 is not very many. Why does the Department of Health and Human Services have 194 of them? That's, that's probably a better question. The term "fully automatic" used in the report they attached a footnote to it in case you didn't know what that meant. It encompasses a range of firearms classified as machine guns, including submachine guns, three-round burst guns, and guns with a selector switch that can enable continuous fire. And, of course, you know, they go out there. It's just hypocrisy at its best. Uh, The guns of the IRS inventory also includes... Over uh, 3,300 pistols, 623 shotguns, 543 rifles, and four revolvers. Right, they're gearing up. Of course they're gearing up. Hmm. Maybe when they want to change over the money, some of you don't want to cooperate. Patriot Radio News Hour, final segment when we return. Final look at the markets. The Dow's up 280, 
Uh, news that uh, China is willing to buy more stuff. Uh, gold's down 10, 1282. Silver's down 12 cents. That's 1542. Uh, U.S. Silver Eagles 2019 at 380. Do have about 20 rolls or so of back date at at uh, 375. And you say, well, what should I do? I'd buy the back date. Now, some of you like to buy, you know, you're like, hey, every year I like to buy a couple rolls of the new year. I get that. That's fine. But if you're looking at it solely from an investment standpoint, buy the older one. Save the five bucks. Uh, $20 gold pieces, Liberties and Saints, either or, mix or match. Thirteen ninety, buy ten or more. I'll take them down to uh, to thirteen eighty at eight hundred nine five one zero five nine two. Talking about the IRS and how many guns they have. I brought you know now that I've read read this, I want to really find out about the Department of Health and Human Services why they have so many. Most of the guns are for the IRS's Criminal Investigation Unit. This investigation unit serves the American public by investigating potential potential criminal violations of the IRS Internal Revenue Code and related financial uh, crimes in compliance with the law. So uh, if you don't pay your taxes, <laughs> uh, you could get a visit from one of these guys, I guess. The 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 other, by the way, they have oh, 2,148 of these people. Then they have nine others. And their job is to provide protection for the people, property, and the processes of the Enterprise Computing Center in West Virginia which houses 10 of the IRS's 19 critical tax processing functions. So uh, some of the guns are used for security in case someone tries to break into the IRS offices. Uh, The rest of them are for when we're bad, and they come looking for you, I guess. So, uh, again, seems absurd to me. If, If there's a... I are an issue with somebody not paying their taxes and the IRS feels like they need to bring guns, uh, shouldn't they call, you know, the cops? I'm just saying. Do they really need to have the weapon? Uh, apparently in the government size, they do. And again, I'm sure, right, just like everything else, right? Everybody can justify everything, but this is just another example. Government completely out of control. You know, think back to the time. Remember when there was no income tax? We wouldn't even need an IRS. We shouldn't need the IRS. Really, when you think about it, that that should be a bigger point. Right? The government used to fund all of its needs from tariffs. All of it. Right? And, and, and of course, let's face it, right? We, 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 <laughs> the people with the money got elected, got themselves elected, got the bankers in charge, and now we're awash in debt and, and, and government is everywhere. Uh, but it's the reason why you don't go. Listen, I'm confident in the fact that the bankers are going to bring us into economic ruin because they've done it throughout history, and I'm confident they're going to do it again this time. 800-951-0592. We will have a show on Monday for Martin Luther King Day. 